For a second straight day, a general strike brought much of France to a halt. The streets are filled with protesters denouncing President Emmanuel Macron. As Nick Schifrin tells us, it is Macron's ideas on reforming sacrosanct sections of the French national retirement system that have sparked outrage across the country. In the City of Light, dusk arrives early in a cloud of tear gas. Protesters have shut down Paris and much of France. Phalanx of police charge at demonstrators and show little restraint. Police have arrested hundreds. In a nation founded on revolt, demonstrators have held up the flag and much of Paris's public transit and schools for two days. Hundreds of thousands of protesters from all walks of life are united by opposition to propose pension reform. Retirees are here, youth are here. This shows that we're all affected by this bad proposal and we're all here to say that we don't want it. I demonstrate for the next generation. I doubt that younger people will have a pension like we currently have. This is the French Union's greatest show of force since 41-year-old Emmanuel Macron was elected president, promising fundamental reforms to an economic system considered anti-business with pension reform at the center. It's the most ambitious reform uh, that Macron has introduced. Jean Pisoni Ferry helped design the pension reforms as a Macron senior advisor. He says they're supposed to make a complex system more transparent and fair. It's a very ambitious reform, the reform of the pension system. We have a, a fragmented pension system, and the, the ambition of the, of the reform is to create a unified system, which would favor mobility because you could easily move from one sector to another, and also, in terms of fairness, it would be the same rule for everyone. France has one of the world's most protective pension systems. France's average retirement age is 62, and the country spends 14% of its GDP on pensions. The average for leading industrialized countries is 8%. These reforms don't actually change those numbers, but protesters fear the reforms could lower pensions and increase the retirement age, tapping into larger economic concerns. Reforming the pensions was the last straw, since in the past few years we've been losing everything, whether it be unemployment benefits or job cuts in the public sector. And as that fear increases, Macron's gotten less popular. His critics call him imperious, and he misread his 2017 election landslide, says Pisani Ferry, who is now at the Peterson Institute in Washington, D.C. See, so there was never a real debate on issues. And I think Macron misinterpreted that by saying he's, that he had got a mandate uh, to do what he was, had proposed. And that put him very much out of touch with, uh, you know, the perception of inequality and the uh, the anger and you know, what we see in many of our societies, that people are, feel they're left behind. For more than a year, Yellow Vest protesters have demonstrated the high cost of living and rising fuel costs. They carried the cross for lower taxes and wage increases on weekends to not lose work days. Today's protesters are mostly unionized employees unafraid to spend work days on the streets. And that means they threaten Macron's entire reform agenda. If he has to capitulate, this means the ability to do anything uh, significant uh, until the end of the term will be, will be destroyed. Let's be serious. Uh, In Europe, Macron has become an outspoken voice, standing up to President Trump and calling for fundamental reforms to NATO and European defense. But if he loses his domestic reform battle, that imperils his international agenda, says Pisani Fari. Part of his legitimacy internationally uh, has been based on the fact that he's perceived as a, as a reformer, as someone who is uh, able to uh, tackle the, the problem of the French society and the French economy. You cannot be unable to do reforms at home and ask for reforms at the international level. Today, the majority of France supports the general strike. Macron's fundamental reforms are being fundamentally challenged and the protesters vow to keep going until the pension reforms are abandoned. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nick Schifrin.